Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for June 20th, 2023. Well, my goodness, we had a little bit of selling on Friday, and this morning we're seeing futures push a little bit lower. But what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Hey, before we get started, a couple things I want to let you know about. First off, we're going to have an, a coming open house. Um, we're going to celebrate the mid mid year i guess here in right way options and on thursday and friday if you guys are available i'll have a link in the description it'll be just below the title of the video you'll be able to uh click that link to register for our free open house it'll be thursday and friday this week i know it's been a challenging year a lot of volatility here in the market but um, if you have some interest, we come on over. I can show you what we do over in RWO if you've been curious um, how we handle things and how we've been making money in this market. If you could um, come on by and feel free to do so, invite all your friends. Make sure you click that link, register for the classes on uh, Thursday and Friday, and the room will be open to everyone uh for those two days let's take a look at these charts and see if we can get some information about how we might want to approach the market for today well we had a little bit of selling here on friday nothing terrible you can see for those of you that were chasing long or might have been chasing long that might have been a little bit of a painful pullback in there but i suspect a lot of folks were expecting a little bit of rest coming into the market at any time now let's take a look here in the diamonds if you take a look if we push right up into here we've got just a uh, well, not really a level in here at all to um, be suggesting that's a top. So could we still go higher if the bulls find um, some inspiration? I think we could. Um, as a matter of fact, when I look at the volume here showing up, it kind of hints at the possibility of a blow off top. But I really think we would probably see a little bit more pop in that volume for a true blow off top so if the bulls can continue to push let's look for these levels right up in here um, one right there and maybe right up in here for that lift on higher to the upside however if the bears were to continue to find inspiration if that was the blow off top on friday and we continue to push down. You can see this morning we've got a little pre-market bearishness coming in here and not a lot of data here on the day to help us out. That could be either good or bad, but a push down into this next support level seems like a likely possibility. If that would be where we would find support. Of course, we could find buyers in here any place along this area and bounce back up but look right into that area for the next price support of course if that were to break then we're moving uh, substantially lower here in the market now looking at the technicals that wouldn't hurt anything at all if we pushed all the way back down into that area of the chart then notice that we're still well above um, our 50-day moving average we got our 500-day moving average in there nice little moving average squeeze to hold us so breaking us down into here really doesn't tear us up at all it just relieves a lot of that buy pressure if we take a look at our first off let me go to the s p 500 if i look at the spx as you can see here there's been a lot of talk about us breaking through or going up there to 4400 in the s p 500 and we achieved that last thursday and then we saw a little bit of selling and pullback now i've also heard quite a little bit of conversation about the possibility that we could see 4500 
as the uh, blow off top area. So that would mean we've still got some upside potential. Perhaps this pullback is just nothing more than a little bit of rest. And then we push up into this higher level for uh, that blow off top to put maybe, maybe occur. Now, what did occur is that we broke a six day winning streak in the, uh, in the SPY pulling that back on Friday and you can see this morning we've got a little tiny bit of bearishness coming in here today. Now if those bulls continue to find inspiration, well, retest of those highs of last Thursday seems like a likely possibility and if they can push on through there, then we go ahead and we head up here toward that 4500 level of the S&P 500 to see whether or not we can um, challenge or pop that to the upside. However, if those bears continue today, I would look for maybe a test of this big candle here on Thursday. Test that low uh, to see if uh, that would hold as support. And if that fails, then I'm looking for possibly a pullback that could come all the way back here to uh, that support level in the chart around uh, 431 in the SPY. Now that wouldn't hurt anything. If you take a look at our moving averages here, we're still well above our moving averages. Technically, we'd be still be in great shape, but what we're showing here in the SPY is a very overbought short-term condition and um, a rest or pullback would not be out of the question at all. So we should be watching carefully for that. If we take a look at our QQQ, now QQQ is also extremely overbought in the short term. Now our PE ratios are really high. I wrote about that in the blog this morning. But if we can continue to see those bulls push, then I would look for a retest of this resistance up here. Um, in the chart, if we can get up there, then I would look for a push through up here to maybe a little bit higher, right up into this area, about 378, 379 area of the chart. If those bears, however, find additional inspiration, well, as you can see, there's not a lot of support underneath any of this. Maybe a test of that big candle on Thursday as support, and that where, that's where we may open here today, pushing down there. But barring that, I would suggest a push down into this area to find some support in the chart. Now, looking at our technicals here once again, extremely overbought. We're a long ways away from our 50-day moving average, which puts us in that danger situation where if we do um, engage those bears, they could really push hard uh, to the downside. And then let's take a look at our IWM. Unfortunately, IWM didn't enjoy um, Thursday and Friday all that much. We saw Thursday nice little pop back up, but then we left another bearish candle here, a bit of a dark cloud cover on Thursday's pop and showing a little bit of push to the downside here. IWM is still respecting this resistance level in the chart showing us that little bit of concern. Now, IWM, if it breaks this support, that's where we're going to be um, getting some heavy selling possibly. If we break that, then there's not much support in here until we push down into this area. If those bulls, however, push right back here in the chart, well, then I'm gonna look for a retest of that resistance right in there, and if they can push through that, right into that level of the chart above. Let's take a look at our VIX. Boy, I tell you what, our VIX has been absolutely nonsensical. You can see here we have done, we have had some very strange moves here in the mark in the VIX. We rallied on um, in the VIX on our Thursday rally to the upside. So fear was rising on the day we were going up. Interesting. And then fear fell like crazy on the day we sold off. Boy, I tell you what, the VIX is really a mess. And with all of the speculation trading and zero today in, um, trading in zero data expiration option trading, that's creating some very strange uh, moves here in the VIX. And I would be a little bit careful here if we continue to push to the downside, remember, we're showing quite a little bit of complacency for the uh, for this market. Doesn't mean we can't go higher, but I would watch that closely. If we take a look at our 
2122. Well, our T2122 really pushed us right back up here into the bearish reversal zone. We had that little tiny bit of selling there on um, uh, Friday, but it didn't really break us down at all. So what that means is if the bulls find inspiration in the market, we don't have a whole lot of upside room to move um, in the index. But if those bears continue to find inspiration, well, let's keep in mind, we've got a big downside opportunity. So if those bears do engage, look for some pressure here to potentially come into the market and it could last uh, more than just a day or two. So watch that close. If we take a look at our T2108, well, our T21, barely wiggled on Friday. You can see holding up here 64 and a quarter percent of the stocks above their 40 day moving average. And remember when we're up in this area, somewhere between this 65 area and up here in the 75 area, we reach that very frothy area of the market where we're just overbought. And then um, that's where we usually get some pretty big pullbacks in the market. So staying very bullish here, there's nothing bearish about this chart right now. In fact, we've got a little bit more upside before we run into some, some resistance in that chart. If the bears um, push, continue to find that inspiration here, well, we've got some good sp support down here in this area of the chart. If we take a look at our T2107, well, T2107 about the same. We little tiny pullback there on Friday, 50% of the stocks holding above their 200 day moving average. Now on T2107, we kind of reach that frothy area, so anywhere above 50% and up toward that 65% in the uh, uh, T2107 is where we kind of reach that overbought condition in the market. Now we're just barely in that area right now and we've got a good support underneath here. So there's no fear at this point of a tremendous fall here in um, uh, T2107. But if we were to start breaking down below this area, you could probably see a little bit of fear increasing in the market. If those bulls continue to push, well, we've got some additional resistance up in this area, maybe up around 54, 55 area of the chart, we might run into a little bit more resistance. Let's take a look at our T2101. T2101, that momentum just ever so slightly showing that little hook starting to come in there, meaning we could get a shift um in momentum here so watch that carefully if those bears were to really pick up and sell off hard we could see that momentum start to spike back up here um, on that bearish side of things let's take a look at our economic calendar for today and our economic calendar well it's a pretty light day we don't have much going on as a matter of fact this week is actually pretty light you can see um, housing market index today we'll want to keep an eye on that number coming out at 10 a.m eastern if you look into Tuesday, not much out there. We've got housing starts and permits coming in. That is obviously a market moving event, so we should watch that. A couple of bond auctions in there. But then, oh my gosh, we start the parade of Fed speakers. We're going to start off here with Jerome Powell on Wednesday speaking. You know, he can certainly move the market. And then it is a lot of Fed talk going on here um, in the market with a 20-year bond auction. Jobless claims on uh, Thursday as normal. We've got existing home sales. We've got Jerome speaking again on Thursday and some more Fed speakers going on. We've got um, natural gas and the petroleum status report on Thursday, Fed balance sheet out here, a few bond auctions. And then on Friday, we're going to kick into the PMI composite and more bond speakers going on. So kind of keep that one in mind. Let's take a look at our um, earnings calendar for today and our earnings calendar really really light as you would expect we're kind of winding down earnings season here and we're going to be going into that quiet period heading into the next quarter of earnings which means that we'll enter a blackout period um, we won't be able the the 
big institutional companies out there won't be able to be buying um, their own stock back during that period of time. So oftentimes we see a little bit of a stall or even a consolidation as we wait for that next earnings. And you can see there could be a lot of anticipation anticipation about those earnings um, coming up because we've extended this market so high can we support these prices um, with the next round of earnings that'll be interesting to see let's take a look we've got uh, FedEx on the calendar for today you'll want to watch this report it's been holding up really nicely and we certainly are going to need these shippers to show lots and lots of bullishness if the market is going to rally because so much of our retail goes through um, the shippers anymore um, with online sales. Now, taking a look right here, we've got a significant resistance level in that chart as well to be paying attention to. And then if we take a look, um, we've got Lazy Boy reporting uh, today. So I would keep an eye on that Lazy Boy. And as far as that goes, those are the only two confirmed reports for today of any consequence. Let's take a look at uh, some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could do me that that favor and that's click that thumbs up button leave a brief comment that helps the channel to continue to grow and I just want to say thank you so much for everyone who does take the time to do that it means the world to me I truly truly appreciate it well let's take a look at a few stocks setting up and I you know I would be remiss I, I don't talk about these a lot because I think these are so overbought in the short term take a look at meta clearly in a beautiful upside trend very very strong in that move to the upside there's just no hint of any major selling coming in here and this pullback into this support area if we pull back into that support area still holding on to this trend area then i would look for that next upside to the up uh, in that chart. Let's take a look at some of the major banks. Now, I personally believe major bank banks have a tough summer ahead of them with some um, commercial real estate defaults um, cropping up and other issues with uh, the Fed still pushing on rates creating some issues. So let's watch this big resistance up in here. JP Morgan has rallied right back to that resistance. So the question is, can they pop out of that? Or will this be another failure from this point? So watch that carefully. Could go either direction here in that chart. I think if the bulls are gonna take it, I wanna push it above that resistance area. I want them to prove to hold uh, that air support area and then start looking for that upside move in that chart. If we fail here, I don't know that I would want to chase that short, but I certainly could do a bear call credit spread. If that were to push on down and create a lower high, that's where I would be looking for directional put shorts. If we take a look at NVIDIA, NVIDIA has been super, super strong, just continuing to run on this all this AI hype, and which, which is actually kind of funny to me. It's kind of like AI has become the new Bitcoin. It's just race in blindly. We still don't know what this is going to do for us. We don't know whether or not um, it's going to hurt us or help us. Um, it all depends on who's pulling the levers behind the curtain, but kind of keep an eye on this carefully. I would suspect in the very near future, we're going to hear some of the downsides of AI is that lots and lots and lots of jobs are going to be lost and replaced by computers. So watch that carefully here. Um, any rest or, or consolidation in here still sets up that bullish opportunity. It's been so strong. I would not rule out the uh, possibility of a longer term consolidation or even more a protracted pullback in that chart. Let's take a look at SQ. Now, SQ is a chart I'm really pretty interested in. I was looking at I placed an alert on it. I thought really hard about buying that on Friday, decided to wait. Pulling back into that consolidation um, area of the chart. So if this rests back in here to trend, I'm going to look for that next opportunity here for SQ. Obviously, if we're going to be all bullish 
in the market. We're certainly going to need these pay uh, systems out here to start picking up. So watch that carefully here in SQ. It's a really nice pattern to be paying attention to. As the dollar has been um, pulling back, that's certainly been helping um, some commodities out there, but <laughs> real volatile here in uh, UUP this morning. Um, big pop up here in the pre-market pulling all the way back, but it is a little bit higher than we were on the day. So watch for some of those commodities to maybe struggle just a little bit if we start to see that dollar strengthen here again. But I would keep an eye on some of these refiners in here. Valero starting to set up in a pretty decent pattern. You can see this W formation holding up in here if we can break through that resistance this nice little consolidating move along here pop through and then we might start moving to the upside on Valero and I've been noticing some of these patterns in Halliburton as well pushing up trying to break through we've broken the downtrend to the upside keep an eye on that Slumberjay also in that same pattern here on those refiners so keep an eye on those if we can start to hold we might get some upside move going on in here and i've been noticing quite a few um, stocks in oil sector stocks themselves moving on up conoco phillips trying to break through some resistance this little wedging pattern keep a close eye on those if those bulls can keep moving um, take a look at wheat now i've mentioned this before um, there is a major threat that Russia is going to prevent exports from the Ukraine, the wheat exports, and that's pushing this up. And the weakening dollar is also giving some rise to this. So any rest or pullback in here that holds um, anywhere along that trend holds support, then I'd be looking for that next side opportunity um, here in wheat. Watch that one closely could be interesting particularly if this situation in Ukraine continues to worsen as you guys know I've been uh, talking about this DK um, and G um, we've been seeing uh, lots and lots of bullishness in these gambling stocks but now we're starting to show just a little bit of a problem a little bit of pullback right here in DKNG if that breaks that support and trend that may be the end of this run. I'd look for the lower high for a short. I wouldn't want to chase that here, but watch that one. Um, what's interesting is the opposite is occurring in some of the big uh, brick and mortar casinos out there rallying up to resistance, but we've been seeing a, a move to the upside in some of those. So watch those if they can break some of those resistance levels. If they cannot, then I would be watching right in here for that next potential failure to the downside. And I, that's where I'd be favoring this chart right now. It's a little bit of uh, breakdown here to the downside in win. So with that, guys, I'm running out of time. Hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. And, a, and another reminder, make sure you go check that link just below the title of the video. And you can register for the open house on Thursday and Friday. I'll do my very best to provide you with some good quality information out there. If you've been struggling in trading, might be able to help. You can check us out and see what we're all about. Wish you all the best, and I'll see you right back here, bright and early Wednesday morning. Have a great day.